Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. I hope you are staying safe and healthy during this unusual time. Before I start with today's episode, I wanted to announce that on May 26th, we are starting our next coaching group. It's a six-week coaching group, and it is for new bloggers and experienced bloggers where we dig in, get to know you and your business, and teach you really how to grow an online business today, especially during this time. Um, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot that's the same and a lot that's different, and we break it down piece by piece. In fact, don't take my word for it. I'm going to read what Clara said about our coaching group. She said, "Being part of the group was such a great experience. Jillian and David provided so much valuable information, tips, ideas, and help. They shared all their expertise, and that is a lot." I strongly recommend anyone join. It's empowering, it's helpful, dynamic, and fun. Every session with them opened my mind and gave me fantastic insights and support for my own business. It's totally worth it. Well, Clara, thank you for saying that. And Clara has continued on with us in our monthly membership. So this is just a great way to get your to get some momentum that's what i would say and we'd love to have you if you have if you want to learn more head to milotree.com forward slash group email me at jillian at milotree.com and if you want to get on a call to talk about your business and how i think we can help you i would love it so please reach out In today's episode, I have David as my guest. He is, of course, my husband, my partner. He is a technologist. He is really insightful. I learn from him every day. What we are talking about is how to look at your blog with fresh eyes. We get really comfortable with our own blogs and we almost become blind to them. So what I've been doing in my Facebook group, my Milo Tree Mastermind Facebook group, if you're not a member, please go to Facebook and join. I will ask people and say, hey, uh, do you have something you want us to review? And people will say, yeah, will you look at my blog? And we really, uh, so what I'm doing in this podcast is outlining how David and I take a look at your blog. What's great is we've got fresh eyes, but we also have a systematic way of looking at the pieces of your blog to see if you are making good choices to help move your business forward. So I'm going to give you some insights into how we think about it. Um, If you want a download, a free download, a checklist of what we're talking about, please head to milotree.com forward slash blog checklist and you can go through this and, and see, hopefully see your blog in a new way. And if you want help doing this, that's where David and I come in. Please join our coaching group. Um, what's great about it is that David is there to give technical and design help. Uh, if, for example, you look at your blog and you go, oh my God, I really need to change this or whatever. We're here. Reach out, Jillian at milotree.com and we will help you. Um, That's what we're here for. So without further delay, here is my interview with David. David, welcome back to the show. I'm glad to be back. It's fun. It's funny because we're sitting here close together talking. Sharing a mic. (laughs) Sharing a mic. Thinking about whether we should have two mics. But realizing that it's probably logistically somewhat difficult. I don't want to have to Skype from another room. <laughs> I know, but it's cute. It's like we're all cuddled up here next to the mic. Okay. We are. We just finished our first coaching group, and it was really fun, wasn't it? It was good. And what was cool about it was getting to know the bloggers and entrepreneurs in the group and really getting to understand their businesses. And, and, and they're our friends. Uh, yeah, especially during... Uh, a time where we're quarantined and not seeing anybody, it's kind of nice to 
uh, meet new people and talk to them. Yeah, and that you have this ongoing relationship. It's funny, we started the group before quarantine, and then all of a sudden the world shut down around us. And it did. It was something that I started to really look forward to, um, not just because it's fun and, and we want to help people succeed, but it was like, hey, we get to show up with this group of people because the truth is we've been hanging out a lot together for a while. So it was really nice. So anyway, we are starting our second coaching group on May 26th. And um, what's cool is that we have really been able to take this time to synthesize how we, t- how we teach and what we think is really important. So we, we thought about doing this episode and sharing how we look at blogs, especially you, David, because you have such a technical foundation. A blog is kind of like your home which is you move into your home with your stuff and you put everything in place and it looks really nice, let's say. And then over time, you start to bring in more stuff. So you might bring in a tchotchke or a decoration. Some souvenirs from the uh, vacation trip. Exactly. And then there's the stuff that is is kind of functional, but you don't really have a spa- a place for it. Like the big mixer ends up on your countertop in your kitchen. Um, and then at a certain point, and then some, like, there's just other, the, the pile of papers. And at a certain point you step back and you go, oh my God, my house is so cluttered and it used to not be cluttered. And I think that there's. Or, or, or you never step back and you never realize Exactly. That. Yes. But, but when your friends come to visit, they might go, hmm. Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. Like, how do I get to the kitchen over <laughs> that pile of books? Yes. And in fact, I think a blog can be somewhat similar, which is it's really easy to add stuff. And I think that we get used to our blogs and how they work and we forget to take stuff off or we forget to pare it down in our Facebook group, the Milo Tree Mastermind group. And we just did this recently. I'll say, hey, do you want feedback on your blog? And somebody will give me their blog URL and we're always happy to do this. And what I do behind the scenes is I say to David, I go, hey, David, look at this blog with me. And so usually we sit by your computer and you call it up and you start looking and kind of how, if I were to think like you, what are your first thoughts of when you're evaluating somebody's blog? Right. Well, the advantage we have is we may not have seen the blog before, so we can really bring fresh eyes. And we've seen hundreds and And, thousands of blogs. Right. So I think, you know, as we give this advice to you having, you've lived in your blog. Mm -hmm. So... Like the the main thing I would say is you're trying to bring fresh eyes, bring your own eyes in a you know a fresh way to looking at your own site, putting yourself in the uh, position a new visitor coming for the first time. And you know as content creators, we're we are intimately familiar with our our blogs or our sites, and I think inherently you kind of think of it hierarchically, right? You think you know imagine you're putting up your blog, you know you start with what is okay. my what is my homepage okay. going to look like, and then you know, what are my sections? And then, then I'll put the blog posts in the sections. But, you know, in the world today, people, it's like the opposite, right? Someone's out on the internet. They're on Google searching for a recipe. They're on Pinterest looking for a cool photo of some home decor. And, you know, hopefully your site comes up and they're going to click on it and they're landing deep in your site. Like they're in a blog post. You know, 90% of the time they're not coming to your homepage and, you know, looking at the cool hierarchy you set up. They're landing in, in it, you know, on your content. So, uh, I think the very first thing is like really the the feel, and like a lot of that is about uh, performance, page speed. But you know, not not like in like you have your stopwatch out, but just when you go to your page, what does it feel like? Like, is it uh, are things loading in blocks and shifting around? Like, if I'm starting to see your content and want to scroll down, like, can I? Like, I don't know if you've been to sites that are loading really slowly and you can't move the page. Like, that can be super frustrating. Like, that can be like an automatic bounce. Yeah, people back out because, you know, they're not even confident that the content they want is going to be there. So uh, go for that that feel first. Okay, wait, just as a, we did a podcast episode, David and me, about site speed, and I will link to that where we talked about certain tools. But if people, what is the URL or where do you, you go to um, to check people's site speed where they can just right. put their URL in? Google page speed. Okay. So I was just saying, like, don't don't think to spot stopwatch first. Go for your own, go for the feel. 
But also, you know, yeah. after that, especially if you think there's a problem, go to Google PageSpeed. It's a, I think that's an important metric to have because a lot of the performance we're doing is in the hopes that Google will uh, reward us or not penalize us for page speed. And there's another site called GT Metrics. That's so if, you, if I like GT Metrics, um, if you're going to sit down and try to optimize your site performance, because I think that some of the feedback they give is a little more clear than what you get from Google page speed. Now let's talk about orientation. Cause you talk right. a lot about this, right? So once someone's there, like they're in, you know, your recipe post, like, kind of like in the bowels of your blog. <laughs> yes. Like they haven't come to your homepage. They haven't, you know, gone through this, you know, it's not the museum tour where they come at the front front desk and get the map and there's the dozer going, okay, we're going to start here. We're going to go into the, to the East Wing first where we're going to learn about desserts and then move into, uh, like I see, maybe start with appetizers, <laughs> end up in desserts. Uh, but they're deep in your blog. So I think these days in the internet, like, one question every time you arrive at a new site, maybe someplace you haven't been before, is like, is this place like legit? Yeah, there's like a moment of skepticism. Right? And you know, because we all know that there are people out there wanting to scam us, or somehow there's like this underbelly. And so, and also, like, if it's a recipe, like, do I trust this person? You know? Yeah, exactly. So, and we know, I'm sure you, anyone who uses, uses Pinterest, you know, sometimes you'll go to a pin. And like, okay, that's a great photo. I don't want to get more information. And you'll click. And then like, who knows where you end up? Like nothing related to it. They're just kind of spamming that photo out, trying to get a click, right. click they, to something unrelated. They've probably stolen that photo. Stolen the photo, reused it, Yep. Uh, bought a stock, unrelated stock photo. Mm-hmm. So uh, one thing is like when, you, when you're pinning, like hopefully there's a easily mental connection that the person can make between the, the photo you're pinning from your post and the content that's in your post. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be the same photo. Like I know we, you can do like custom mm-hmm. pin, pin photos, mm-hmm. kind of the tall uh, with a label. You may not have it in your post, but as long as you just want to be able to, like the gut reaction should be, okay. Oh, I'm the, here. Like I'm, I, I, I arrived I, at I, a, And this is right where I'm supposed to be. Right. And because that's your, your first hurdle. The second one is like, they might go like, okay, if I'm, before I invest like more than two seconds here, start scrolling. Like, what is it, this place? Who are you? Who are you? And that's and why should I trust you? Like one thing we uh, recommend is having the, the little mini bio. Like a, if you're uh, an individual blogger, your photo, it could just be like a sentence or two, your mission statement, who you are, who you are. Right, and you can click to another page that has much more information about you. Yeah, by all means have an about page, you know, if you're com- comfortable with that, with, but we, with, with more, but because so you know, you don't know where people are coming, what page they're going to view first. Assume that on every page, you want to have something you. about yourself to let people know, hey, I'm a real person. You know, I have a real mission here with my site. Right. I like that. So you would have a photo, preferably of you, a tiny, like a line or two about you. And if you can put your mission in there of like, so it's not just I'm a mom of three and I live in Colorado. Right, but be, I'm a budget baker. I could say it should be on the first page that people view, but you don't know what that page is. Yep. So yep. you blanket it on every page. And then also let's talk about nav because your nav should be on every page. Absolutely. And I think the, the question around nav is uh, once someone has arrived, like you've done all this work penning uh, images and optimizing for Google search results and someone clicks to your page, like, uh, you know, ask, like, what do you want from that person? Yeah. Like, what do you want yeah. them to do? Yeah. This like, is a really interesting question because I think as bloggers, especially if we started 10 years ago, we didn't think about that. It wasn't about building a business. It was like I was creating a blog and look, I can put ads up. And it was almost like you backed into a business. And today, I think it is all about what what do you want this visitor to do? And how does that help you grow community, make money, build your brand? But very clearly, is this person, do you want this person to read this post? Do you want this person to sign up for your list? Do you want this person to download something? Do you want this person to buy something? But what are you, or do you want this person to click on five different right. pages and, of your site? Right, and the gut reaction, I'm sure for everyone is like, yes. 
right? You know, <laughs> I want all those things. Read the recipe, print it, make it. Uh, pin it. View five more pages, pin stuff, Buy join my, my list, <laughs> click my affiliate links. And, and follow me on Instagram exactly. with your Milo Tree pop-up. So but the truth is you want to be optimizing for one thing. Right, and this is so hard. It's right. so hard. Do you got someone on your site? Are they is your goal to get them on your email list? Is your goal to get them to buy something? Is your goal to get them to view more pages because you've got great content? Yes. I want it all. You're right. But I do there should be a hierarchy in terms of what is most important for your business. And again, um, how many times do you come to a blog and then lots of things are popping out at you? I mean, this goes back to Milo Tree. And when we created it, our feeling is really one ask. Now, people will have multiple pop-ups on their sites in addition to Milo Tree, but really our thinking is always funneling people to, to make it so easy for them to do what you want them to do and not confusing them. And it's the kind of thing where, again, this is um, one of those moments where when you step back and you think about it that way, you wanna find that journey and kind of put road signs, like pointing, going, do this, go here. I like actually when blogs say, start here in the nav. Because guess what I do? Start there. I start there. You just told me what to do. Given this uncertain time, as online entrepreneurs, all we crave is certainty. So what if I could promise you that growing your social media followers on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, plus your email list could happen automatically? All you need is a blog or a site you own and some visitors, and I guarantee that the Milo Tree pop-up app will automatically convert those visitors into followers and subscribers, and you don't have to do a thing. We are no longer living in the world as it was. I think we're all realizing the importance of nurturing our online businesses so we can have freedom to live the lives we want. But in order to get there, we have to manage our scarcest resource, time. So let Milo Tree do the heavy lifting for you when it comes to growing followers and email subscribers, and you spend your time creating content, solutions, products that serve your audience so you can start seriously monetizing your blog. So here's my advice, stay consistent, kill the perfectionist in you so you can get stuff out there quickly. Touch yourself with kindness, embrace the mess, and go make a couple of smart choices like using Milo Tree on your blog to grow your followers and subscribers so you don't have to worry about that. Sign up now for Milo Tree and get your first 30 days free. There's really no risk. 8,000 other bloggers just like you are using Milo Tree right now to grow their businesses. Please. Pause this episode and head to milotree.com to sign up for your free trial. With all the worry we're feeling, this will give you one less thing to worry about. So what are you waiting for? Hit pause, head to Milotree, and sign up today. I think it's also a good time to bring in mobile. Mm, yeah. Let's right. Again, mobile. again, as content creators, we're spending a lot of time at our desk on our desktops yeah. or laptops with big screens. Yeah, you should see what our office looks like right now with our big screens. So uh, you have to always remember that we have the bulk of our audience, audience on mobile. Yes. Like could be 60, could be 80, could be higher, 80% or higher of people coming on, your, on their phones. So uh, that means there's a lot less on their screen when they visit your site than uh, on your screen when you're designing and creating your blog posts. And the other thing I would say is if you came to our house and watched us at night, let's say watching a baking show or so, which we love, we will be on two screens. I'm going to admit it. So you're sitting there, we're watching, the show's on in the background, I've got my phone out and I'm scrolling, which just means not only am I seeing a smaller screen, but I'm also distracted. Absolutely. That's why you want any a, a way ask. that you can direct people to do what you want. You need to be doing that because who, you're only getting, not only getting small real estate, but then also like in terms of people's mind share, they can only devote 15% of their attention, 30%, hopefully 60%, but chances are it's not 100%. Yeah, and 
uh, one like very specific point is your logo. Mm, let's talk about that. So again, we love our own brand. We do. Right? So we, do. we want a nice big logo to show off. And again, on a desktop, you know, you can sacrifice a fair amount of space to your logo, and it's not that big a deal. But uh, I'd say quite like I don't know, maybe half the blogs I go to, like between the logo and the nav you can't even see the title of the post on the first page without scrolling down. Mm -hmm. So you're already forcing the user to commit to your site, wait for it to load, to scroll, to even start to see your content. So what do you recommend for somebody's logo? Uh, simple, wide, and uh, short. And we were talking about this. How many pixels tall would like, you say? Uh, under 100 pixels tall, if possible. And wow. because because it's that short, that's why... Uh, simple, easy to read. Easy to read. Yep. All right. Let's talk then. So you've got you want to have a small logo or a, a short logo, especially on mobile, and then also a short nav, just in terms of height. Yes. Okay. So those are things. So again, like we fall in love and, with our own and, designs and, and our. I would own say. I mean, navs are things that typically take up too much space because they're tall, but they might take up too much space because, because there are too many options in them. Let's talk about that. And again, that ties right back to what is the ask, mm -hmm. right? Someone's uh, come to your site and they're not bouncing off, but maybe they've read a, a little bit of your content, but now want to go somewhere, mm -hmm. maybe see some, some more content and they're choosing to use your nav. You know, how many things are you going to put up there to give them you know, a reasonable choice of making a quick decision. And what is the kind of conventional wisdom? R rule of thumb is when you're presenting choices, uh, five or fewer. And do you have a home? Do you, does it say home or does it not say home and you just, you know, link your logo to your homepage? It's okay. Like your, your logo should always link to your homepage. Okay, regardless. Regardless. Uh, I think it's okay to have home in your nav, but you don't need it. Okay. So if you need to, if you need space, get rid of that. If you, if you have six things in your nav and one of them's home, I would definitely get rid of it. Okay. Okay. And therefore, would you do, let's say that I am a travel DIY recipe blogger. I know it's a lot yeah. and it's not, it's honestly not how we, uh, what we recommend. We recommend go figure out which one of those is your most popular, where people are really connecting with you and, and go that way. But let's say, uh, you know, so I've got a part that says recipes and DIYs and travel and then I'm not going to have home but then am I going to have like an about us and maybe a shop are you feeling overwhelmed you look overwhelmed I, I, I'm starting to feel overwhelmed <laughs> <laughs> okay so I might drop the about first Ooh, again, and just put it in the footer in the footer and you potentially uh, have a about module somewhere like if it's on desktop it's going to be at the top of the right rail mm-hmm you know, when that when you drop into uh, a mobile view, that'll typically drop below your content, which isn't as accessible, but it is still there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about fonts. Definitely, <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people are attracted to many fonts. Uh, and why don't you want many fonts? Starting with uh, performance, ah. e each each non each specialty font, non system font, means you're going to have to Everyone who views the page is going to have to load the font before they can start reading the text in that font. Okay. So typically I would say no more than two fonts. Really? And the main thing is you want like a, a typeface that's very simple, easy to read, right? A uh, Maybe a, a serif font for your titles and a sans serif font for your the body of your your post your content. And do you really think that's enough? Like like I think that we love fonts and they're pretty and we love right. photos and, right. like and, we and love again, it. I think there's a particular like you know if you you're trying to evoke something friendly and homey yeah. you're, you're going to be attracted to like a script Scripted type font. script typeface mm -hmm. and that uh, but think about like those can be much harder to read. Mhm. Mm Okay. So especially at a glance, if someone's scanning the page and uh, you just want something as clear as possible. Okay. That, yeah, okay. So and, you know, I, and along the same lines, I think there's a disproportionate amount of time spent on 
uh, like WordPress themes. And, yeah, can we talk and, about and, that? And, you know, all these, like getting the right background. Like the truth is you want people to see your content first, mm. right? And to a degree, you know, the typeface and your theme and like the background image, like those are helpful in kind of like setting the stage and creating like a feel for what kind of site it is. Mm. But the truth is what you want people to see right away is the title of your post, the content, the key photo from your from your post. Mm -hmm. And you don't want like the background color of your theme to distract people from the content. Right in clash with your content, let's say. Yes. Okay, let's talk about then sliders. People love sliders. Yes, I would say sliders are uh, emblematic of indecision. Ooh, right? okay, I get it. Like I have limited space, but I want to do multiple things with that space. So I'm going to use a slider to put a bunch of things in uh, that limited amount of space. It's a, it is, it, I like what you're saying because it is a little bit like this. You visitor, I'm going to serve you up a whole host of choices and you decide. And it sounds really good. Like I'm going to let my visitor decide. Well, and we well, would say, you know, no, 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 you decide. You as the content creator, as the blogger, you decide. Right. So welcome to our restaurant. Here are our three menus. Which one do you want to order from tonight? Right. 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 Uh, there's a, like a lot of data around sliders too that people tend not to interact with them. Ooh. So like, let's say you've got a slider with three pieces of key content. And typically I would say people use sliders on their homepage, not in their right. posts. Right. Just if you think all three pieces of content are important, uh, break them out of the slider and let people scroll vertically down. It's much easier to scroll vertically and scan through three pieces of content than to wait for a slider to load and wait for these transitions. And you know, most sliders I would say are pretty poorly designed. Like, are my arrow keys gonna move the photos? I don't know. Like how big is the target to um, shift to the next slide? Can I go backwards? Mm. Like all the, mm -hmm. like a million little pain points. Mm -hmm. And I think most people have had enough painful experiences with sliders, they tend not to interact with them. Yes. So I that it's a, you know, if you have a slider on your homepage, I would say, okay, like look what's in it and decide if you really want to promote all that content and either get rid of it or break it out. Got it. Um, one thing that you've always taught me um, from like, I don't know, I feel like 20, the last 20 years is this idea that when you make people click, they drop off no matter what, always. And therefore, you don't want to necessarily be giving your audience so many choices, kind of a little bit like the about page. We were just on somebody's site yesterday evaluating it, and the woman had a beautiful photo of herself, and there was no text underneath it, but it had, like, you could click on it and end up on her about page. And we were saying just even having a little bit of text right up, like pulling it up, will give people much more information about her than assuming somebody's going to look at that photo, click on it, and then go read about it, her. Gu guaranteed. Okay. It, that is true, right? If you, Fewer people are going to click through than will see it. So if you want people to see it, put it there. So always think about what are you serving up and how, if you want people to see those, like if you're hiding stuff behind sliders, it's kind of a similar concept. Yes, if you imagine like, you know, the prime real estate on your blog homepage is a slider, it's gonna get less interaction guaranteed than if you just had a piece of content mm. that you were focusing on and featuring. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that that speaks to kind of, you know, what you've always said. Like you don't wanna be hiding stuff, assuming people are gonna happily click. Yeah. Cause every time you click, it's a little bit like you're opening a door. You don't know what's on the other side. It's like a commitment. It feels kind of uncomfortable. It, and weirdly, you present people with choices, the easiest one. Back out. Back, back is that true? Sure. Okay. All right. So the thing that I, as we're kind of wrapping this up, as I'm looking at my checklist of things, uh, oh, oh, one last thing, which I just wanted to mention is that something that you always look at is, and we talked about this in our previous podcast is, do they have a caching plugin? Do they have a, a, a photo optimizing plugin? Like, I feel like when you just look at a site yeah, after it, you've kind of looked at it. I, I throw those into the page speed that first okay. that first like 
how quickly does it load? How quickly can I interact with it? Just how does that feel. initial feel? Okay. So a lot of, I think, what we are sharing. And by the way, if you like how we are thinking about this, if this is resonating, please sign up, join our, our next six week coaching course, because what we do is we do deep dives into your site and we give you um, thoughts and ways to, to figure out a, what kind of niche you're in, how to make money in your niche, how to create content that will get you to where you want to be and how to be really intentional. I feel like that's a word that is coming out of our conversation today. Instead of saying, I'm going to push it on the visitor. It's yeah. like, I need to do all that thinking up front. It, and it can be hard. And it's hard. Because you have to make, you know, you have to choose. You kind of have to, to like. Pick your favorite child. Yes, yes. And by the way, in our coaching group, we're there to help you make those choices. Look at your analytics. Feet, you know, figure out who you are, what your what your mission is, what your message yeah. is. Oh, oh, in in reality, data is a really powerful tool. You can look to see. Let's say you've put tons of stuff on your pages, and you're trying to figure out what to take off. Looking at your data analytics to see what people have been engaging with is a great guide. Right, and one like, thing we talk about a lot is this idea of you put it out there and then you're co-creating with your visitors, with your audience. Like it's not just the Jill show, it's how how do you, how does the combination of something I put out there mix with people and their questions and their interactions with me and me going further and it becomes this kind of beautiful soup um, but, and then using analytics to go, what, what vegetables in the soup do people like? And how do I make another soup that's similar to this soup? And so there's a lot of, um, as I like to call it, like emergent building. And that's really how we think about building businesses on the internet. It's fun, uh, because you get to touch people. Don't you think? Absolutely. Like, that's what I think I, I like the most about it. That's why I don't know if anyone's. If, if anyone's new here and... You mean uh, to the podcast? New, new, new to blogging. Okay. Right? And ha mm -hmm. maybe they're, they've been thinking about it. That's why I'd, um, I would caution them against spending like a ton of time like designing a custom theme. Yes. Hiring somebody who spent thousands of dollars. Like designing your nav. Yes. It, it will get, all change. <laughs> yeah. Get something up sim that's quick, easy, simple, that you know, looks good. Start putting content in. And then... As Jill says, things will uh, um, uh, become obvious in as you go. As you go, you learn. Yeah, yeah and that is something. And by the way, remember we can help set up your um, your blog with our Blog Start program, and we're happy to do it for that very reason, which is we want to get you going. We want to get you started. You know, set, right. like again, you you might think when you start that you're going to have. Uh, you know, a dessert blog and the category nav is going to be candy, chocolate, and right uh, cookies. Yeah, cookies and cake, and then you're going to put up two or three posts, and you know, oh my God, it's I didn't know this, but it's people just love my cupcakes. So throw out your nav. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. Now, now it's like chocolate cupcakes, vanilla cupcakes, you know, whatever frosting. Right. Right. Those are your, that's the nav that's going to work for you. We don't know until you. Uh, yes yeah, so you want to be and, right you want to be really nimble and you want and this is and, where my b, and, b minus work comes in right you, be, be nimble and not therefore invested into kind of uh designing yourself into something that's hard to change or expensive to change absolutely like sp spending a thousand dollars for a custom theme that you're going to have to or want to totally redo after two or three months absolutely yes nimble 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 fast meaning get it up be embarrassed, do B minus work, um, and then see, and then reach out, and then listen, and then make decisions for your visitors. Yes. Based on what you know, based on you as an expert, based on what you want from them. Um, and right. maybe people want your email list, maybe people want to follow you on Instagram because they're more interested in your photos. Absolutely. So you're gonna try uh, focusing on different asks Mm -hmm. Depending on that. Absolutely. Like, That's follow me on Instagram yep. or yep. join my mailing list. Yep. Yeah, you don't know. 
and a lot of times you are you get to be surprised but it is how you set yourself up as an influencer as an expert you want people to feel comfortable with you and to feel like you can solve their problems so that's what I would say. Okay, what we are going to do is have a checklist for you um, so that you can do this for yourself, so that you can kind of like how you walk into your house that one day after you've lived there for a couple years and you kind of potentially see it in a new light and go, oh my God, how did all this clutter show up? Um, we want to help you walk into your blog, take a look. Notice, by the way, if lots of things are one thing we just looked at when we were just recently reviewing somebody's blog are all these things jumping out at you and doing all of this animated stuff like simple 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 take stuff off like get rid of things think about how much you've added to your blog think about anything that moves <laughs> is going to draw the eye okay so how many times do you want people's eyes drawn off your content and i'd argue one at most mm. Mm, right. So think about again, it's that it's that trite saying that less is more. And I think it is. I think intention, uh, focus, and simplicity is real and going. Go. Like go write stuff. That's how you learn. That's how you start connecting. It's not about waiting to launch your blog until your designer has done everything for you, waiting until you've gotten that one perfect blog post written and then launching right, it's like until your friend from college finishes your perfect logo exactly go ahead and use yeah go a, make a your logo own yeah go to canva like just go is really i think our recommendation david i have loved having you on the show again thank you for having me i enjoyed it and we'll do it again of course I hope this episode gave you a new way of looking at your blog. And if you want our free PDF download, head to milotree.com forward slash blog checklist, and you can look through all of these items that we have highlighted. If this sounds interesting to you and you want to work with us, reach out to me at Jillian at milotree.com. Our coaching group is starting on May 26th, we would love for you to join. And in fact, I was going to read what somebody else wrote. Uh, Jenny Deremer said, David and Jillian immediately came in, took a huge piece of that stress off me, and followed up with weekly small site fixes and suggestions. I've never been so proud of my site. David and Jillian are energizers. Plus, David is a tech genius. His help to me has been invaluable. Um, so please uh, reach out. Uh, we're here and we're really excited to work with you. The other thing that I didn't mention is it becomes a community of like-minded entrepreneurs and bloggers and especially during this time when we are isolated and it can feel like you're almost like yelling into the abyss. Like is anybody out there really caring what I'm doing or listening? Well, the truth is people are and we are. And we're there to help you, support you, hold you accountable, encourage you, and teach you, push you, get you over those humps, and get you really growing your business. So please head to milotree.com forward slash group, and we would love to have you. And I will see you here again next week. Mm -hmm.